It was decided that we would bring dishes to celebrate my mother-in-law's 60th birthday. The moment we were alone in my in-law's kitchen, my husband began snacking on the dishes. Hey, that's bad manners! The moment after I scolded him, my husband grabbed a large plate and hurled it into trash. Scattered miserably inside the trash can are a variety of colorful dishes. Hey, what are you doing? Those are homemade! When I shouted, my husband glared at me and walked away. Don't make such awful food for mom's 60th birthday celebration. Huh? What's with this taste? Even pig feed would be better than this. We'll be utterly embarrassed if we serve this in front of relatives. No, I might even collapse. Wait, you... Can't you cook properly? You're really making me sick with your incompetence. I'm really fed up with your constant failures. It's only natural to throw away such shoddy stuff. At that moment, I calmly responded. I didn't make any of it, okay? What? After this, my foolish husband would end up falling into hell. My name is Lisa Fisher, 32 years old. I'm a housewife on childcare leave. My husband's name is Matthew. We met through a friend several years ago. Matthew works for a medium-sized company and earns a decent salary. I originally worked as a civil servant after graduating from high school, so I'm not familiar with how things work in private companies. I learned during our courtship that Matthew's annual income was slightly higher than others of our generation. After a year of dating, Matthew proposed to me. I accepted it joyfully. Afterwards, we went to Matthew's parents' house to pay our respects for the marriage. Welcoming us, there were my mother-in-law and Matthew's brother, Harry. Matthew's father had passed away before we had met. Since Matthew chose you, I won't oppose it. My mother-in-law continued in her calm manner, and my brother-in-law added, I'm definitely in favor too, Matthew. Congratulations on your marriage. As I smiled politely to them, Matthew remarked, Harry, isn't it about time you got married too? My brother-in-law is a so-called elite who graduated from a top university and works for a large company. Well, it's not easy when you're traveling around the world for work. As Harry chuckled wryly, Matthew added, it's pathetic that even the elite can't get married. Take a lesson from me and settle down soon. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I felt a sense of unease on that day. Could it be that Matthew harbored complexes and a sense of rivalry toward his older brother? That's what I thought. But I didn't point it out. Since Harry was usually abroad and seemed to have little involvement, I thought it wasn't worth worrying about. And so Matthew and I registered our marriage and began living together. But then, within our married life, Matthew began to look down on me in various ways. Because you only graduated from high school, you probably don't know about these things. If you're stupid, your capacity to know things must be bad, too. Such words were thrown at me on a daily basis, and all the household chores were pushed onto me. Yet, I endured for over a year. At that time, invited by my brother-in-law, we were to gather at Matthew's parents' house. Thank you for coming today. Well, I've been thinking of marrying Melody here. She was introduced as a petite, young, and beautiful woman. Looking over to the side, I noticed Matthew seemed absent-minded. Was his brother's marriage such a shock? Matthew seemed irritated on the way back home. Matthew, is something wrong? You should have been a bit more polished. Huh? We were completely overshadowed by my brother's wife in appearance. Besides, you're too plain. Suddenly, I was taken aback and then astonished by all this. Seeing Matthew trying to compete with his brother at this age seemed pathetic to me. After that, Matthew suddenly became enthusiastic about starting a family. I couldn't believe that Matthew was so determined to have a child before his brother. Although I thought about it, I didn't say anything. I felt the same way, longing for a child, which is why I had been thinking it was about time. I became pregnant eight months later. When we found out the baby's gender was a boy, Matthew jumped for joy. You nailed it, Lisa. You're pregnant with a boy. That's amazing. His joy seemed more about having ammunition to one-up his brother rather than just celebrating the fact that we were having a child of our own. Matthew promptly invited his brother to our parents' house to announce my pregnancy. 
Lisa's pregnant. It's a boy. Matthew said proudly, and my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law, and my brother-in-law's wife, Melody, all congratulated us warmly. Then Harry spoke up. Actually, we're expecting a child, too. The due date will be a little after Lisa's. Upon hearing my brother-in-law's words, almost as if to overlap him, Matthew asked, What's the gender? Huh? Uh, we've been told it's a girl. The Matthew's expression changed, as if he had anticipated this. Oh, it's a girl. Well, the family heir will be my child after all. And it's a boy. It'll be the first grandson for Mom, too. Matthew, wait a minute. I tried to stop it, but Matthew remained smug. Then my brother-in-law chimed in with a wry smile. Anyway, let's both do our best in parenting. But, you know, I've got a long-term overseas trip scheduled just a month before Melody's due date. Oh, really, Harry? Surprised, my mother-in-law nodded, as my brother-in-law Harry confirmed. Yeah, so I'll have to leave Melody behind in America. Melody is estranged from her own family, so please lend a hand, Mom and Matthew. Saying this, my brother-in-law smiled at us. Both my mother-in-law and I replied, Of course. And Melody nodded silently to us. After that, my brother-in-law embarked on his overseas journey. Matthew would occasionally go to check on Melody. When I offered to accompany him, Matthew declined, saying, I can handle it alone. Given my pregnancy and lack of energy, I wasn't particularly concerned about Melody. Eventually, I gave birth. We had a baby boy whom we named Hunter. Since Matthew completely delegated childcare to me, I was primarily responsible for raising him. One month after my delivery, Melody also gave birth. They named their newborn daughter Lydia. For this occasion, my brother-in-law also returned temporarily to celebrate the meeting with his child. Having two grandchildren all of a sudden feels like a dream. It would be nice if they grew up close as cousins. My mother-in-law seemed genuinely happy. Then, after a while, Matthew started saying he had gotten busier at work and began coming home late. On weekdays, he would work overtime almost every day, and even on weekends, he'd say he had to work on his day off and go out. With our son still young and demanding attention, I grew increasingly frustrated with Matthew's self-centered and uncooperative behavior. Then one day, Matthew invited me to talk. Hey, next month, we're celebrating Mom's 60th birthday at my parents' place. Oh, is that so? Mom's turning 60 on her birthday, right? Yeah, seems like my brother can't make it, so it'll just be us, Melody, and some relatives, making it about 10 people. Can you prepare homemade dishes? Huh? Am I supposed to prepare dishes for 10 people all by myself? That's impossible, especially with Hunter needing attention. Then why not divide the tasks with Melody? Get in touch with her and discuss it. With that, he left for the bath without further ado. I was a bit annoyed with Matthew's attitude, but I resolved to do my best for my kind mother-in-law who always treats me well. I quickly reached out to Melody, and her response came back as follows. Is that so? I'm looking forward to showcasing my skills since I attend cooking classes. Melody's unexpected enthusiasm was a relief. So we decided to divide the preparation of the lavish dishes for the anniversary celebration. Matthew's return was late again. In addition to taking care of Hunter, I was busy arranging gifts for my mother-in-law and preparing drinks. The day before my mother-in-law's 60th birthday celebration, I was out in the afternoon for Hunter's checkup. By the time it finished, it was evening and Hunter was sleeping soundly, so I decided it would be nice to dine out. I went to a favorite restaurant where my husband and I used to go during our courtship days, and as I waited for our food to arrive, I suddenly heard a familiar voice. Is this place okay for today? Wow, Maddie, you know such stylish restaurants, don't you? And who should appear but Matthew himself? Moreover, he was accompanied by none other than my brother-in-law's wife, Melody. Up to this point, one might think that my husband was just taking Melody out to eat while checking up on her. However, Melody called Matthew Maddie earlier. Would she use such a nickname in a relationship like that of sister-in-law and brother-in-law? On the spot, I decided to hide an eavesdrop on their conversation. Actually, this place used to be my wife's favorite. We used to come here often. Huh? Don't talk about that person. I'll get jealous. 
Well, well, I really don't think anything of such a plain wife anymore. <laughs> I tremblingly started recording with my phone. Did you leave your daughter with the babysitter again today? Yeah, because my husband earns good money. It's a breeze. As for my husband, there's only just money, you know. You're a bad wife. But you, even though you've just given birth, it's impressive that you're wearing makeup properly. I wish my wife without makeup at you could learn from you. Haha. <laughs> While Matthew and Melody laughed and joked, my hands were trembling the whole time. Shall we meet at the usual place after dinner today? Yeah, that's fine. Shower me with affection again today. Just then, Hunter woke up, worried they might notice. I left them at the store and slipped away. Pushing the stroller on the way home, I was fuming. Never did I expect him to cheat while not helping me with childcare, and with my sister-in-law of all people. How much more can they mock me and my brother-in-law? I'll never forgive them. At that moment, I firmly swore to myself, "I'll make them see what they've done." When Matthew returned home, as if nothing happened, I greeted him, then messaged Melody on WhatsApp the next day. Hey, I have something to discuss. Then I received this response from Melody. It's okay. I also have a little favor to ask you. We exchanged WhatsApp several times after that. Thus came the day of my mother-in-law's sixtieth birthday celebration. As the relatives began to gather, Melody and I were in the kitchen preparing food. One dish after another was placed on the ornate plates I had bought after our marriage. Hey, let's get started. I'll bring the alcohol and dishes. Matthew said pompously, and Melody replied with "Okay" as she carried the alcohol into the living room. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law was busy entertaining relatives, leaving just Matthew and me in the kitchen. Then Matthew began snacking on the arranged dishes. He kept putting shrimp appetizers and terrines into his mouth one after another. Hey, that's rude. Just as I scolded him, suddenly Matthew grabbed the platter and flipped it into the trash. The colorful dishes scattered miserably inside the trash can. What are you doing? I made those from scratch. When I shouted, my husband glared at me and said, "Don't serve bad food at Mom's sixtieth birthday." Huh? What's with this taste? Even pig feed would be better. Serving this in front of relatives would be embarrassing. Heck, I might even collapse. Wait, you? Can't you even cook properly? You're really useless, and it's annoying. This kind of shoddy stuff deserves to be thrown away. Then I calmly said, "But I didn't make anything, did I?" Huh? Matthew looked puzzled. What are you talking about? These plates are ours. Then it's the food you made, isn't it? No, I just brought the plates. Someone else made the food. In the next moment, there was a sound of something breaking at the kitchen entrance. Standing there was Melody. What's going on here? What is this? Why is my food being thrown away? Huh? With Matthew visibly shaken, I quickly exclaimed, "I wasn't feeling well yesterday, so I asked Melody to do all the cooking today. I took plates from our house too, though, because we didn't have enough plates. I wasn't actually feeling unwell. Fueled by suspicions of infidelity, I wanted to push all the work onto Melody. I felt she took it gladly, but I never expected Matthew to make such a drastic move by throwing it away. This is getting interesting." No way, Mel. I'm sorry. My husband was so flustered that he even forgot to call her Melody. I heard it all. You say you'd rather feed the pigs. What a thing to say! Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to. At that moment, my mother-in-law and relatives, alerted by the commotion, came into the kitchen. Understanding the situation, everyone began to berate Matthew one after another. It's terrible to throw away the food Melody made. It's unthinkable to say such things to your wife in the first place. Matthew turns pale at the unexpected turn of events. Meanwhile, Melody is sobbing quietly. So I decided to drop a bombshell in front of everyone. Matthew must be in shock too, right? He threw away the home cooked meal from the woman he loves, thinking it was a harassment towards me. For a moment, the room fell silent. Matthew, Melody, and the relatives all stared at me in astonishment. My mother-in-law asked, trembling, "Matthew, 
What on earth does that mean, the woman you love? At that moment, I took out my phone and played the conversation I recorded the other day. My husband has money, at least. You're a bad wife, but you're amazing putting on makeup properly even though you just gave birth. I wish my wife without makeup at home could learn from you. <laughs> Shower me with affection again today. Listening to their disgusting conversation, the expressions of our relatives and my mother-in-law changed abruptly. Wait a minute, Matthew. What's the meaning of this? Uh, this is a misunderstanding. Yes, this isn't us. It's a conversation between different people. I calmly told Matthew and Melody, who were both making excuses. But your names, Melody's name and Matthew's, were mentioned in the conversation, right? That, our relatives and my mother-in-law glared at Matthew, demanding him to tell the truth. Eventually, Matthew seemed to resign himself, dropping his shoulders heavily. Oh, I just wanted to steal my brother's woman. I wanted to feel superior to my brother, who always outshined me. Huh? Didn't you say you loved me? Was that a lie? Despite Melody's outburst, he ignored it and continued. Don't tell my brother about this. Just keep it here and now, okay? Got it? Is that clear? The next moment, a voice echoed through the room. It's too late, Matthew, Melody. Harry! There was my brother-in-law, whom I had contacted. I rushed back home, and the evidence isn't just Lisa's recording. I suspected Melody and secretly kept tabs on her. There are mountains of photos, too. Matthew and Melody's mouths were agape in front of my calmly speaking brother-in-law. He continued regardless. Melody is over between us. Matthew, I'm cutting ties with you, too. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to claim compensation from both of you. Huh? No way, Harry. I'm sorry. Melody started clinging to Harry while Matthew approached me. Lisa, you're not going to leave me, right? I'll apologize for the affair. Let's stay together. I pushed him away and shouted. That's not happening. You and I are getting divorced, too. I'll demand compensation from both of you. I get Hunter's custody. You don't ever show your face again, you scumbag. Oh, no. Matthew had become like an empty shell, and Melody started crying hysterically in a half-mad state. Their relatives ended up kicking them out of the family home. Afterward, divorces were finalized between me and Matthew and also between Harry and Melody. We both filed for alimony against each other's ex-spouses, resulting in each of them having to pay $60,000. Melody subsequently relinquished custody of her daughter to Harry. Melody's parents paid the alimony and took her back to the countryside, saying we'll whip her back into shape. Matthew found himself without savings and apparently resorted to borrowing money from his mother, as his payments weren't sufficient. However, his mother declared them to be estranged. Currently, it seems Matthew spends his days earning money for debt repayment and child support. Even after hearing that, I don't sympathize with him at all. As for me, on the other hand, I've returned to my parents' house with my son and am focusing on raising him. I still maintain a good relationship with my mother-in-law and brother-in-law, occasionally meeting up to let Hunter and Lydia play together. From now on, I would like to look forward to my son's growth and live a positive life. <laughs>